Howdy there, stream freaks! You know, most times I quiz horror fans on the voice talents behind the gremlins, the buck usually stops with them knowing the dad from Bobby's World is Gizmo, and a green meanie or two is played by Frank Welker, the literal voice of Saturday morning cartoons. Fun facts to know for your next family game night playing Trivial Pursuit, sure, but those two are only providing a fraction of the noise behind this cackling army of rubber puppets. The rest of these Spielberg critters were brought to life by a few other lucky actors, but one in particular was so integral to their monstrous sounds. He's the only gremlin performer to be in both movies with Howie and Frank. Well, let me introduce you to Mark Dodson, a fellow who was an indentured servant to George Lucas in the early 80s when he got his big break after being caught doing Popeye impressions on the job. Given a shot of recording some E.T. lines for Return of the Jedi, Mark was originally going to audition for the space opera's most memorable sea kitten, but had a last-minute switcheroo after the voice director heard him shake off some nerves with wild gibberish he thought was perfect for another creature needing a voice. Cast his job as lap jester, salacious B. Crumb, Mark's knack for manic noisemaking brought him to the attention of another Hollywood heavyweight, Steven Spielberg, who eventually hunted him down to provide a similar performance for the mischievous Hellraisers and his new creature feature by Joe Dante, Gremlins. Thanks to this short order combo of roles and two blockbuster movies, Mark's career as a vocal gymnast took off and has since been heard in Ewok movies, video games, and a whole slew of commercials. Wild turkey, give him the bird. On tour to meet his fans and spread some cheer during these sour times, Mark's travels luckily swung him by my favorite toy bin of yesteryear and today's Playful Plastics Toy Federation. So of course I couldn't help but meet the cut up behind some of the most fun scares I've ever seen captured on celluloid. Mark Dutt. <laughs> Mark. <sighs> anyway. You didn't know I could speak French, did you? Bong, bong, bong. French. Bang, bang, bang. English. Ha <laughs> ha. Thanks to your velvet gravel pipes, you've managed to rise above carrying George Lucas's wood and become a what force What was that again? About something gra gravel? Velvet gravel? I love that. Velvet, velvet gravel. gravel. Wow, that's nice. I like that. Gotta admit, until I saw your resume, I had no idea how many commercials featured your voice. But that shouldn't come as any surprise, given I always skip that part. How's it feel knowing most people fast forward through your best work? <laughs> um, I'm fine with it. I get it. Uh, and that is very true. And people do fast forward through. I don't know if it's my... Some, some of it's pretty good stuff, but all that able to fast forward through stuff happened when my kids were little. And I'd be, you know, maybe in the other room and, and the commercial would come on and I would hear my kids fast forwarding through it. So I would go into the living room and be like, what are you doing? And like, we're fast forwarding through the commercials. And I'm like, why? That's the best part of the show. Why would you fast forward? Don't you realize those commercials are what are feeding you? Because they're like, dad, dad. I'm like, I'm just saying, you know, I do more of that than I than I do of, of shows and movies and things. So yeah, yeah. I used to, and they, they knew, you know. Oh, dad, stop it! And they fast forward to it. I'd be like, you're probably fast forwarding through your dad. They didn't care, you know. <laughs> Once I knew what to listen for, I could have sworn that was you in the men's warehouse ad. Wouldn't you agree that George Zimmer would be your vocal cord twin? <laughs> yeah, I suppose it would. You're gonna like the way you look. I, I guarantee it. it. Speaking of separated at birth, do you ever think Toby from The Office looked just like Lenny? Wow. You look a lot alike. Good looking chap. Since we're talking about Gremlins, most fans probably don't realize the first movie's ties behind the scenes of the Transformers, because mere months before they blew up as pop culture battle bots on Saturday morning, you were actually recording Gremlin voices in the booth with Frank Welker and Peter Cullen, better known as Megatron and Optimus Prime. What was it like working with these voice box heavyweights, and were you aware of your co-star's rise to fame during the Transformers' initial run in the 80s? I was aware. Well, um, now see, I was more um, uh, Frank. Uh, Frank Welker because I, I knew Frank Welker because I'm the age where I was the first generation to enjoy Scooby-Doo and since I was into um, voices and characters and things I knew Frank Welker was Freddy and I knew he was always the ghosts and and he was always like at the end of every Scooby-Doo when they would go they pull the mask off the guy and be like Mr. Flanders or it's you and then and then you'd hear the guy go yeah and if it wasn't for those kids and that dog I'd have gotten away with it that was always Frank Welker so I was really excited um, yeah and then yeah and then the, the Transformers thing got, they got huge with that so I was excited I was overwhelmed honestly 
you know, they'd been around longer than me and I, I was quite overwhelmed. You know, you walk into a studio with those people and really you feel like, I don't, I don't think I'm supposed to be here. <laughs> That's really how you kind of feel. Velvet Gravel. The velvety gravel of Mark Dodson. If folks Google you, you have one of the best stepping stone success stories I've ever heard from someone who made it in Hollywood. Can you give today's newbies any advice to help them get their start in the voice acting biz? You know, they always say you need to be in the right place at the right time. And that, there's a lot of truth to that. The easiest way to do that is be every place all the time. And then you'll be in the right place at the right time. So what I'm saying is work hard, put, put the time into it, network. Um, but, but you know, it, it needs to be a passion because most likely you're going to hear, you're going to audition and you're going to hear no a lot that you didn't get the part. And unless it's a passion and something that you really love, those no's will destroy a person after a while. So believe in yourself, do be true to you, put yourself in it, be true to you. And then you just gotta hope that it works for other people when they hear what you do. You know? sure. Like for me, you know, I've ended up, I was working as a laborer and an apprentice carpenter by then. Take anything you can get. And, and this goes for any job. Whatever profession you want to be in, I don't care if they're at a TV station just looking for the janitor, and I'm not kidding you. If you're trying to get in there in production, take the job as the janitor, let them know you want to be in production, because then you'll be there when it opens up, and you'll, get to, you'll be networking, you'll be getting to know the people. Don't be like, well, or, and that goes for anything you want to do. If you can get into the profession at any level, you work, you'll work your way up, stick with it, be a nice person, be pleasant to work with, and you'll get up there. Hey, Velvet Gravel. Velvet Gravel. To satisfy the Star Wars fans out there, you were originally supposed to audition for General Akbar, but never got to, because the voice director switched you to Salacious after hearing the wacky sounds he can make. In retrospect, you ever feel like you shot yourself in the foot not being cast as one of the Star Wars' most quotable second stringers? No, as a matter of fact, just the opposite. Uh, because if I hadn't, uh, like, if I hadn't have gotten so nervous that I couldn't even audition for Akbar, and said, "Let me have a minute to get these nerves out," and gone over, and, gone, <laughs> and then for him to say, for for Ben Burt to say, "Forget Admiral Akbar. I got a character, a creature that that what you just did there is going to be perfect for." Well, see. I think that if I'd have tried to fake that I wasn't so nervous, I probably wouldn't even have gotten the part of Akbar. Probably wouldn't have worked. But not only that, but if I, let's say I did get Akbar, I would have never gotten the Gremlins. They would have never, uh, the, the Gremlin thing, because the Gremlins came, because the Gremlins were made by the same guys that made, you know, Chris Wallace and Tony McVeigh, that, that made Salacious. And that's why it came up that, well, they look a lot the same. Wouldn't it be great for the Grillmans to have that same voice? Who is that guy? So it ended up like being the greatest mistake ever for me, you know? After all these years, you finally want to do that audition so we can hear how a fish face might have sounded in an alternate timeline? Oh my God, what do you have, the copy? This is like what they handed me. Now I'm getting nervous. <laughs> As you can see here, the Death Star orbiting the forest moon of Endor. Although the weapon system on the Death Star are not yet operational, the Death Star does have a strong defense mechanism. It is protected by energy shield, which is generated on the nearby forest moon of Endor. The shield must be deactivated if any attack is to be attempted. It's a trap! That's the one they wanted. That, that was the, what they gave me, and that's why I was like, I'm so nervous to try and read this. <laughs> anyway, wow, that was fun. Shit, shit, you just took me back 37 years or something. I don't know. <laughs> Billy! Well, thank you kindly, Mark. It looks like I gotta corral my partner before he breaks the piggy bank again. Well, I'll see you later, Scream Freaks. <laughs> Wow.
Well, howdy there, Scream Freaks. Well, thank you kindly for watching, and help yourself to more servings of Screaming Sue by visiting our site at ScreamingSue.com. You can read our weekly updates, character bios, and interviews, catch up on past episodes, browse our store, and drool over the howling hottie of the week. If you want to scream at us, just holler at ScreamingSoup at gmail.com, and don't forget to stalk us through social media conveniently linked at the top of the site. 